Hi everyone, I'm, I am Jeff Lawton. I'm going to look at a game from the Women's Grand Prix taking place at the moment in Lucerne, Switzerland. It's between the world champion Yu Wen Yun and Nana Zagnidza. And the uh, standings, uh, Nana Zagnidza uh, coming into this round is, is joint first. She beat uh, Marie Sivag yesterday to join Goryach Kino in the lead. And Yu Wen Yun is slightly struggling in, in the tournament, I think it's fair to say, and she's on, on an equal score, 4 out of 8. So, uh, she opened with d4, Yu Wen Yun, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, so we've got a queen's gambit, knight c3, c6, sort of perhaps heading for a semi-slav, and the sort of the more ambitious of the uh, white alternatives, bishop to g5, allowing uh, very sharp dc4. We had knight bd7, perhaps heading towards uh, you know, a Cambridge Springs uh, variation, but Yu Wen Yun uh, changes it into an exchange variation. cd5, ed5, and now queen c2. So we have a, like a standard line um, in the exchange now. Both sides develop. Which b7, e3, castles for black. Bishop to d3, rook e8, and now h3, which is uh, slightly unusual, I suppose, uh, compared to castle and king's side is the, the move that's most often played. So knight f8. And again, bishop f4, sort of, um, again, not the main line. Uh, usually, uh, well, the idea of this is to sort of pres preserve the bishop, because usually this piece will get exchanged after black's uh, intended manoeuvres. So an interesting choice from you. Knight g6, bishop back to g3, and now bishop d6, uh, swapping off uh, this piece. Bishop takes d6, queen d6, and now castles queen side. This is um, Yu Wen Yun's idea: is to have play on both sides of the board. So, you know, she's obviously going for a win, then she can uh, catch up with her opponent on five points, and uh, you know, it's it's ambitious play. So let's see how it goes. We have b5, so we're going to have opposite side attacks in the game. G4. And a5. So both sides are just gaining space on the uh, attacking side. Now g5. Sort of waiting for the knight to go back. And then um, use plan is just to push on with h4. But uh, so I need to play this really interesting move for uh, b4. Not worried about uh, pawn takes knight. So you played knight a4. And gf6 is. It is interesting, actually. Um, then after after B C three, uh, F takes G seven. It's sort of difficult position to know what, quite what's going on. Both sides have got these pawns advanced. For example, if you play um, C B two, White can play King B one. It's not the standard way to um, hide your king behind the opponent's pawn. Uh, it should be reasonably safe unless they can land a knight here which is not likely in this position and after something like perhaps queen f6 white could play knight h2 uh, moving the attack knight and then instead of intending to go knight g4 and um, uh, you know it's a complicated position but you decided to play knight a4 knight e4 and uh, dg1, so she's signalling her intentions here. She's uh, perhaps uh, guarding the g4 square, so h4 doesn't allow bishop to g4. So Zagnitsa decided to exchange off the, the dangerous white bishop. Bishop a6, rook a6, and now uh, king b1. So king b1 is interesting because white you know, could change her mind here. It would not be unreasonable to to um, sort of try and play the the rook over to c1 and uh, and target the the c6 pawn for rook a7 it's a good move sort of bringing the rook back round it's done its job so it's, she's bringing it back into play 
h4, rook c7, and now black's idea is to, is to sort of play for the c5 break and uh, put pressure on um, on the queen's side where, where she wishes to attack. So we have h5 attacking. Um, funnily enough, there's a slight drawback to this pushing the uh, pawn up. It is an attacking move, but actually brings the knight uh, onto a sort of a more use, more useful uh, squares, really. So it, you know, in itself, it's a double-edged move. And the knight came back, regrouping to f8, and now knight h4. So the idea of that is to, because this knight is very strong here, so use idea is to play f3 and... Um, you know, sort of kick, kick the kick the knight away. Queen e6 to sort of hinder uh, the knight coming to f5, perhaps, and also, and she's got more pressure on the on the e pawn when f3 is played. So f3, sorry, when f, when, it, when f3 is played, I meant to say, knight d6, and now rook e1. So it's very double-edged, but white's got a strong square here. Um, so black now can cover that one time, and uh, this knight's now doing something useful. I mean, it's just sort of difficult to know what's going on in this position because you know white can at attack with g6, uh, perhaps h6, but g6 is more usual. But at the same time, the white knights look a little bit odd compared to black's knights. You know, both on the on the side of the board. So we'll see how this goes. Rook e2, and it's like Nidza didn't, didn't hang around, play the sharp move c5, which is a good idea to open up the uh, queen side, and perhaps she's you know doing this while these two knights are uh, on the edge of the board. d c5, and now double rooks. The black pieces do make a, a good impression, they're all very you know uh, well coordinated, they're close together in the middle of the board, and uh, Working together, whereas whites, whites do look a little bit scattered around. Uh, so g6 was played. Knight takes c5, and now gh7. It's possible that actually isn't isn't such a good move. Um, um, maybe maybe instead uh, knight takes c5 is uh, more accurate, and after rook c5. Queen d3, and then if we if we sort of carry on as in the game, uh, it's like Nitsa played queen f6. But the difference was that we've got the moves uh, fg f, fh7 and king h8. So it's can still try the line again. Queen d4, queen takes d4, e d4, rook c4, and one move that White's got available to her. See in the game, um, we've got this position and Black's. That rank is no longer weak, but in this particular position, White could play double rooks uh, with sort of the intention that after rook d4, uh, this would this would lose to knight f5 of a neat move, and then knight f5, of course, uh, Black loses a piece anyway, but knight f5 runs into in, into mate because of um, the fact that the pawn the pawn's still on g6. So perhaps knight c5 is more accurate. Though. Black wouldn't have to go down the whole of that line. Like I say, gh7 was, was used move. King h8, and now she played the knight exchange, followed by queen d3, and now queen f6. Black, black could also play um, a4, uh, and then, you know, she doesn't, you know I, I guess that black is worried about the move h6. Because a4 looks quite logical just to get on and, and develop the uh, develop the attack, but it, it turns out h6 that uh, black can take, and um, you know, black's probably okay because the h file is still sealed and there's no no immediate way through. Although it's true you can't g5 looks very tempting, but it uh, runs into a, a very nice mo uh, line for white, which is queen d4 check, and after f6 there's the sort of Rather startling, Queen C5. Uh, when Black Black would be forced to take the knight, because if you play um, if you play this, it runs into a nice uh, knight check. King takes knight check again on F8. King moves, and then uh, at the very least, you can take the queen off with a with a strong position. 
like I say, anyway, H H6 can be well met by Queen H6, but uh, Sagnitus' Sagnitus's move is, is safer, Queen F6. So now we go into an endgame, Queen D4, Queen D4, E D4. Now Rook attacks the, the D pawn, which you defended with Rook to D1. So we've got an interesting ending now, but uh, Black, um, although Black's a pawn down, this, this pawn can soon be regained, and then the this pawn is um, can be attacked by the Black King. And this is the, the main difference is that Black's pieces are, are better coordinated, the Rooks work together, and White's King is, is cramped as well. And these two pawns uh, you know, make it difficult for White to free, free her position, and on top of that the Knight it's not so well placed, so it's black that has the, the better chances in this, this particular endgame. First she retreated her rook to c7, then rook g1, and now we uh, regained the pawn. Doubled on the g file with rook e g2, and now f6 to prevent that. So black's knight is much better, it prevents the uh, white knight coming to here, and uh, this is a sort of a bit of a problem piece for white really. What, what is she going to do with that piece? So you played rook e2 and now a4, intending to play a3 and gain more squares and open up the, the black king. Although it's an end game, you know, two rooks and a knight is, is a very strong attacking uh, material force against a king. Now rook e6, knight to c4, uh, white sort of Short of time, played rook e2, so they repeated. Knight d6, rook e6, knight c4. Um, they've reached the time control now, and this time Zagnitz uh, fared and played a3, sort of playing for the win. And it increases the sort of, you know, the grip on the uh, the white king's uh, position here. B takes a3. B takes a3, and now knight g6. So having opened up the uh, the queen side right now, takes care of her king again because the knight can now with, with the knight on g6, this knight might come to f5. And now knight f4. So it's, if white tries this, which might might be a better defence, but then. Uh, Black can play something like knight f5, rook c7, rook c7, so white's reduced the amount of material black has to attack with. But black still retains an advantage after rook d1. And now rook c3 targeting the targeting the pawn in f3. And then something like knight f4, rook f3, knight d6, and now black can round up the, the uh, h-pawn right here. Knight to d6, and again, black has a, a very strong position. The knight's uh, sort of out of play. The, the knight, this knight's blockading the, the d pawn very nicely, and uh, eventually the h pawn. You know, it's not going to be long before the h pawn falls and black is in a winning position. So, knight f4 was played by you, and then knight f5. I'm not worried about knight d5 because if if uh, White does this, it's a mistake due to rook b7, king a1, and then simply knight d4. And the, you know, we've been saying for a while that white, white's king is caught, and this is a, a good example of it here because knight c2 is coming. And then black would have to give up the white would have to give up the exchange. So you played knight e6. Now first uh, king was driven into the corner, king a1. You can see why why she's advanced. On the board with a3 now. And now rook e7 putting pressure on uh, white's pieces again. So rook b1 hoping for an exchange, but uh, rook e8 uh, doubling up and putting more pressure on the d e line. Rook e1. Now the king uh, advanced, uh, and this is the main difference again, like I was saying. Well, Often white is stuck on the uh, e-file, she can't move anything, and the king is cramped, so uh, you played knight f4. Uh, king b1 is uh, was a sort of alternative, but um, you know, it's, still, it's still a good position for black. 
after something like uh, rook c8, uh, rook c2, black can trade rook c2, king c2, uh, then, then rook e6 would win in this position. So white wouldn't be able to uh, knight d4, king c3, knight e6, so white wouldn't be able to free her, her king easily. So in the game, the only other move was knight f4. We'll have an exchange of rooks on e2, rook e2, rook e2, knight e2, and now king h5. So we've reached um, now a knight and pawn endgame, but they're, they're known to be you know, very good if you're a pawn up and you've got better pieces. You know, there, there is a sort of rule that they're a little bit similar in that regard to a king and pawn ending, where you've got an extra pawn. doesn't always apply. It will win for the extra pawn. But um, you know, the main problem here, again, for white is there a king is absolutely miles away from the, the king's side. But uh, but you still make sort of a fight of the game. So she played king to b1, and now knight e3, which was a little bit curious at the time, because we were thinking, well, the obvious move is king h4, which probably is a, an easier way to to play a stronger line board. But there's, you know, uh, Nana's move is also good, but it's sort of less obvious. Because after, for example, something like this, king c2, g5, you know, black's attacking over here, and white uh, can play king b3. Uh, cause if you play king, king to d3, then black just plays king h3 to g2, and can... Uh, you get a very strong pass to g pawn, and then after king h3 anyway, king takes a3, king g2. Sort of just to show you an idea of what happens in the pawn race, black is a long, long way ahead. Um, after something like knight g1, king f2, knight check, trying to slow black down, king g2, a4. Just to show you that white is a, a long way behind. Uh, king c5 to stop the knight uh, coming to stop the a pawn. And then knight e7, or trying to, king d6, knight here, king c7, and now white, black can just play this. You can always manage to get the knight here, and white runs out of time even though she can win the knight. For example, king b7, g4, king takes, g3, a5, g2, a6. And now queens, and of course, after queen takes d4, this is uh, uh, completely winning for black with um, with our extra pawns. So that wouldn't uh, that would have been perhaps a, a quicker way to win the game, or simpler maybe. But uh, Nana played a different way. Knight e3, now king c1, uh, g5. So it's a bit similar. So but but the white king is now coming nearer to the uh, you know, where it needs to be on the king's side, defending the f-pawn. Knight c4 check. And then uh, king d2. King d3, sorry. I mean, sort of obvious move to try, really, somehow seems to be king e1, which looks like, um, you know, the sort of move to do, really, intending to come uh, king f2 and then, uh, you know, protect, protect the f-pawn, which needs, this is where black's activity is. But, um, it seems that this is still good for white, for black, after king h4. For example, if knight c3, you can play knight b6, and then after knight b5, coming for the a pawn. Black can then play king to g3, uh, king e2, and now knight a4. And the idea is that, uh, well, if you play king e3, then uh, f5, king e2, then f4. And that's even worse for for uh, white, because black's just managed to advance. So if white plays, the only other option really is knight a3, then we've got check, king d2, and then knight takes a2, uh, king here. And then just to show you that this is a very difficult position, not lost for white really, black can slowly advance, f5, knight c2, f4, it's you know remarkable how restricted the the white knight is here, but black black is in a strong position because her king is uh, you know, managed, managed to get through to one of these two squares, which is where where the king needs to be. So after something like uh, knight e1, we've got knight c1 check, king 
king d2 and then um, a nice move king f2 um, so we can't take the knight and if you play uh, knight c2 we can then play knight b3 king c3 and now sort of a bit similar to the game we can take here but we've managed to win the a pawn in the meantime and this is very easily winning for black after king takes g4 knight e1 king e2 knight g2 f3 knight f4 king e1 sort of it's simply intending f2 uh, which is totally lost for white knight d3 king d2 then after knight f2 g3 and okay it's just an example of you know that black this is the sort of thing black is aiming for to to break through so in but in the game we had um king d3 which so somehow seems less, less logical but uh, perhaps you realize that the, the other line didn't work and now the black king advanced to h4 knight c3 so black uh, safeguarded that pawn and now knight b5 king to g3 king e2 and f5 so um if, if white plays king e3, it's basically the same sort of thing. f5 takes f4, king e2. And now in, in this particular position, black can play g4, breaking through. Because after fg4, f3, king there, black's got the very nice move, knight c4. Now we can't move the knight because if you go here, for example, then uh, knight d2 check followed by f2 and uh, queen straight away and knight b1 is a similar meets a similar end at this time that the knight comes to e3 um, so after king f1 knight c4 white would have to take but then black you know is easily winning this because she's going to queen queen with check uh, d5 c3 d6 c2 and then black queens it's actually checkmate so king e3 doesn't work so you played the better move king e2 and now uh, nana played at f5 so it's really a very nice ending there's some really nice lines in this and it's, it's very good technique uh, in my opinion very good technique by uh, it sort of calculates the you know a way to win the game uh, very well up to here so white uh, captured on a3 uh, f4, sort of cementing the weakness, and knight c2, knight a4. You see, one one thing you can see different from this to the 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 earlier line where black could have gone king h4 sooner is that white's kept the a pawn here, and it makes a difference. It's not not quite so easy for black to break through. So a3 for white, knight to c3 check. And now king d3, which allowed Zagnids uh, to a sort of a wonderful move, which she calculated, uh, which was king f3. And after king takes knight, king e2, and she uh, queens a pawn. And it's you know, quite a simple win after that for, for black. So we should really look at what would have happened if if instead of king d3, if you had gone, gone king to d2. I mean, you may well ask, well, what, what on earth difference does it make? Why can't you still play here? But the difference is that this time, after um, knight e1 check, instead of king c3, which will transpose to the game, and after king e4, um, that white can play king here, and after f3, there's sort of there's the move uh, knight f3, king takes, and now we end up in a, a queen and pawn ending there. Both sides queen a pawn. So we just advance, 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 advance and queen. And then white queens. And now we get this queen and pawn ending, which uh, in the commentary, Gorovich assured everybody was, was winning for black, but it's certainly not, not the way you want to have to win the game, try and win the game. But it's true that black, uh, black pits up the, uh, the pawn on d4 with queen c1. King b3 and now uh, queen b queen c4 and we can take on d4, which, like I said, Mikhail said um, 
actually believe was a winning winning end game for black. Uh, and just to be clear on this, we can't play king here because um, you know it meets with the same thing, which is uh, queen c4. And uh, in this particular line, you can even take the pawn off with with check. So. Um, So king d2 is um, like a, t a tougher defense, so king f3 doesn't work. But black can play um, other moves. For example, she could try knight here. And then after king e2, king g2, and the idea is that we're just sort of trying to force white to, to make a move. You can't move the king because the f-pawn drops. You can't, well, if you move the knight, then the, the, uh, this pawn drops on, on, on a3. But um, we can play knight e1, and after king h3, uh, white can try pushing the, the a pawn, and then we get something like knight c3, king f2, knight a4, and knight d3. So then we end up in this you know, very interesting position here of, of where sort of both sides are rather, rather stuck. Black, can't, black hasn't managed to get the king to one of these two squares, which she had in the game. Which assured her the win, um, but on the other hand, the a pawn has fallen, and uh, you know how does black break through? And I'm, I'm not entirely sure that it's possible. For example, you have a line like knight c3, knight e5, and knight d1 check, king e2, knight to e3, and then king f2. So black can't force white's king away. Is the main point I think, and then um, after something like if you try and Try and come after the d pawn uh, with knight f5. White's got knight g4, knight d4, knight f6, and you know white picks up the picks up the d pawn and without losing her f pawn. And again, because I think white seems to have enough resources to to defend this. So interesting to see what deeper analysis reveals about this this um, attempt to defend. But in the game, uh, king d3 was played. And like I say, um, Zagnids played a fantastic king f3, and after king c3, king e2, she she accurately foresaw this um, some moves ago that uh, she gets a queen and is well ahead in the race. And uh, in, in this particular position here, the knight, you know, compared to what we were looking at before, the knight can't gain access to the e1 square, um, so there's no way for her to bring the knight to try and stop the pawns. So the game continued, knight b4, f3, and now knight back to d3, and now g4, knight f4 check, king e1, sort of intending f2, knight d3, and this time king to f1, knight e5, and now um, you know, it just shows you how accurately uh, so I need to have to calculate this because f2 doesn't work, I'm actually loose for black. Because then, um, you know, obviously after here, here, knight f2, white picks up the pawn and can queen her own pawn. But uh, this really is very, very impressive calculation. g3, knight takes f3, and now uh, again the only winning move, g2. And now uh, king b4. Just to show you what happens, uh, how accurately Nana calculated this, if white plays a4, and after king f2, a5, king f3, a6, this is the difference between this and, and the other lines we've looked at, is that what black is this time in time to stop the pawn, but only by a single tempo. So, you know, chess is difficult, isn't it? Um, so king b4 was played in the game, king f2. Coming to take the knight, knight g5, hoping for the, the blunder, which I hope none of us would make, allowing knight check. But instead, king g3, and this uh, finally uh, gains black a new queen. So, king c5, desperation now really from uh, the world champion. Queens, king takes d5, queen h1, king d6. Bring the king back nearer. King f4, knight e6 check. King e4, d5. And now queen h2. King c6. 
and now king to e5 knight c7 check on c2 king to d7 queen a4 king e7 so now she's won this pawn and after king c8 king d7 sorry queen d6 king c8 queen e7 because black's about to play black is about to play uh, king to d6 and then uh, and then win the pawn for example if if uh, if king b6 then uh, king d6 and after the knight moves uh, black can safely take on, uh, on on d5 and then it's a simple win so really really very good end to the game by Nana Zaglitsa, which Yu Wen Yun defended, defended uh, with all her might, but it, uh, the position was against her. And the standings after that round, it's uh, Nana's uh, a second consecutive win in the last two rounds. So she's now uh, overtaken Gori Uchikina and gone into the lead on six. And we have uh, two rounds to go, so it's still... She got. I mean, she got a one-point lead over most of the players, but uh, Goriach Keener is still uh, within uh, touching distance. So it should be a very interesting end uh, to the tournament. So I hope you enjoyed that that uh, subtle end game. And uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe and or like the video. Thank you very much. Bye now.